Good morning or good afternoon, world. It's 2.06 in the afternoon on uh, July 13th, almost the middle of the month, 2017. Dave Herman, alias Daz the Artist. So from 2.06 to 2.16 approximately, I'm going to do a 10-minute daily sketch. Now, I just got to say one thing. I'm going to go bonkers if software updates don't stop coming in the middle of times when you're really working hard. You know, your phone says Android update. Your computer says Windows update. That stuff is driving me bonkers. Are you with me? I hope so. Okay. Meanwhile, here's my cat with the mask. The Tengu mask, which I have now properly distorted and redrawn my kitty cat. Uh... So, I'm moving this around. I'm work a little bit on the head. What you see here is just some colors and playing around with the brush. So if we go to a brush, see, I've been working on this kind of a wet stroke brush to get like a nice feel to that. So I don't know what I'm going to draw. I'm going to go to layer two. <laughs> it's driving me bonkers today. That's all I got to say. All right. So I'm going to do some kind of a, see, I got a little bit of this eye showing now. The mask is on. The nose of the kitty would be here. I kind of thought this out like it was a solid mask, hard, maybe made out of paper mache or something like that. It's splitting. Some of the seams are uh, coming apart. Actually, if I blow that up a little bit, you could see that better. And we'll move it around. And... Uh, you know, this stuff, there's a lot to do to it. That's all I got to say. There's always a lot to do um, when you're an artist. It's just it's just that way, you know. So here we go. There's the kitty's head, the mask. I'm loving how it looks. And I'm working on this in-between stuff. You see, I got the split going. There's the eye in there. So if you don't want that eye to show through this, it's on a different layer, right? Watch. Boom. Boom. Um, you can erase it on that layer. So if you're on this layer and you hit erase, for instance, even though the mask is there, we can work on the layer underneath. Isn't that cool? I just thought I'd show you that. You knew that. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the layer. Uh, I'm on the right layer I want to work on. I don't need all that stuff off to the side. I'm going to do just some kind of cool artwork. I don't really have any notion. So I've set up my brush a certain way here, or I'm going to. Uh, where is the side control? That is, there we go. Let's go to airbrush. Let's go to shape dynamics. Let's go to, uh, so this stuff is not on because we're not in the brush. When we're in the brush, I want to show you people that too, because this is just 10 minutes, but if you ever have a problem where these are locked, and that was a problem of mine, <laughs> if you're an eraser, for instance, you see, it takes and turns these off. So if you ever turn this on and you go bonkers because the stuff's missing, like I did, uh, it's because of this. I had to search that answer on the Internet, by the way. All right, let's get into some painting. Uh, I'm going to keep this brief, a lot of chatting this time. And we're going to go down to here just because sometimes uh, I don't want to reveal so much. But now you're going to see some serious stuff and stuff. Stuff and stuff. So we're, we're painting with a wet brush. See? So this is the inside of my ear, my kitty cat. Pressure works, you know. These outlines uh, I'll remove, but they give me something to uh, envision a little bit where I'm going with this, you know, because I'm a freehand kind of guy. I kind of look at stuff. I did this setup. Um, trying to understand the ear of a cat, you know, that's that's got me a little perplexed. I'm digging it, though. So we've got this going on here. And you start to see how we're making a shape. So um, let's just work a little bit here. Okay. 
And now I'm going to show you how you can just make that outline sort of disappear. And let's say you have this interior line, you know, that I've thrown in here just as guidelines for me. This is my gesture work, uh, or they used to call them key lines, too, if you were just uh, working on the graphic arts. So see how this is a heavy line, but you see how we made it into art? So kind of work your way up to that, and then just bring your tone right dark to it, and then it kind of disappears as a line. It's not so much a line uh, as the border. Uh, so to show a difference between borders, it's always hard for me to articulate why I'm drawing. You can... Um, just by contrast, if this is white and this is a, a tone, just by that contrast, you can define that ridge. So let me get in closer. Without showing the line, see? And that's that's kind of what you want to do if you want it to look a little more realistic. So I'm, I'm doing this black and gray uh, buildup. And because I'm a tattoo artist, I have a different way of approaching uh, some of this art. The thing is, when you draw, and you paint, and you tattoo, and you live long enough, um, somehow it starts to make sense in a different way to you. Each of the artist art forms that I get into, and have gotten into over the years, enhance my other ones. I'm still looking for a word for that, because when they taught computers to translate, say, from English to Chinese, it didn't do such a good job. And then when they taught the computer to go to Spanish, too, because I watched Microsoft talk about this in a TED Talk, uh, it suddenly, when they went to Spanish, then it suddenly was learning Chinese better. And when they went to French, then it starts to learn all those languages. So there's a, a name I haven't quite come up with for this particular thing, that when you learn uh, more and more, uh, in the same discipline, but cross-platforming, like let's say I'm painting, but I work in just uh, digital, or I'm working in fine art with real mediums, like oils and acrylics and stuff, there comes this thing, this thing in the brain, where you start to understand all of them better. And it's, there should be a name for that, because it's, I'm trying to articulate that. I think you get the idea of what I'm talking about, but it 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 should be a term like Gramangi or something, you know, which is that moment, the sweet spot moment where you understand from doing this how to use a charcoal pencil better or something like that, you know. So I'm just showing you what I created with a wet brush to make this charcoal. Uh, or a paintbrush. So you can use it as charcoal, you can use it as sumai painting. But you see how we're doing that? Like, uh, there's just some that, you know, got going there. I could work in the other ear even if you wanted to see. Um, it's hard to get things done in 10 minutes, of course. I'm trying to keep your attention by talking a little bit for you, because normally I just sit here quiet myself as an artist, you know, just do to do away, you know, and uh, some hairs inside the ear are always good. So you can do that. You can just rough them in, and then you can tighten up your brush, and you could go in and create those. So the thing about black and gray, which is very important to learn before you get into your color and everything like that, is uh, how to create shiny surfaces matte surfaces, fur, um, you know, a hollow. See this? Like we want to go a little hollow here. You see that? It, it, we're starting with nothing, the void. We start with our white paper, which is the void. It's the empty. And then we introduce a line. And the line has value. It gets thicker and thinner, like this outside of this ear or the top of his head. You know, it's not a straight line of even thickness. It's got value. It's what we call it in art, has thickness or thinness. 
then 